Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. There are so many people around who believe their own dreams, visions, their lives, ideas, businesses, ministries, and their egos are on the line. They keep themselves depressed because they want to find a meaning for themselves. A true believer in Christ begins to excel when like john your language becomes that i may decrease are we together so that he will increase our society is full of people who are always under pressure to be known please listen to me i'm sharing with us a very powerful key there is this obsession for fame there is this obsession for prestige men and women fight themselves we argue with ourselves as to who is greater the disciples one time walking with jesus began to ask they said master you know who is the greatest among us and jesus looked at them he said you're already adopting a wrong template but he said he that is greatest among you shall be your minister the word minister is servant Hear what Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, not if Joshua Selman be lifted up, not if Koinonia be lifted up, believe me, brothers and sisters, any other agenda you have that is outside of exalting the Christ and making his glory revealed is a waste and will only punish you and keep you in frustration. From beginning to the end, it will always be, always be you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. For Jesus. Jesus, you're the center, and everything revolves around you, Jesus. Listen, if you really want God to honor you, the key is to forget about the deceitfulness of vain glory the deceit that fame and popularity can bring does god want you famous oh yes but the key is not to seek it the key is to seek that christ alone directly be glorified and god will surprise you beyond your imagination i watch with a lot of shock the way we pressure ourselves looking for fame looking for names it's led audience to all kinds of things pastors we want crowds like this this is the ambition of many people 
so that i'll tell you where we got that thinking from it's very sincere but it's wrong we came from backgrounds cultural backgrounds territorial backgrounds where we have been faced with this competitive spirit are we together of trying to prove to our contemporaries our loved ones those in our environments that we are successful so um uh, in a, in a very sincere attempt to be great, we have found ourselves under pressure not to glorify Christ but to prove to everyone around us that we are not failures. Are we together now? It has led us into what the Bible calls vain glory, the pursuit for mundane things. So, Lord, I want money so that by the time. I dress well or have a car and a house, everybody will know that I'm not a failure. Do you know one of the ways Satan deceives people is to try to tell you he will give you what God has already given you. So he makes you go around trying to do everything. There are many young people. We want to be rich. Why? So that in-laws and people will not think that you are a, you are a non-entity and it has driven us to all kinds of stupid things. There are all kinds of people telling lies wanting to show that we are great people and so you tell a lie you know my father is in the u.s for some reasons he can't come into the country whereas your father is an iron bender somewhere you are not proud of him because you think that by saying my father is this and that you will not be seen as being successful from beginning to the end it will always be always be you Oh Jesus Listen Anything in your life That does not glorify God directly I'm telling you today Is a waste I don't care what it is Money Fame Children Marriage Prestige Accolades Whatever it is Because the Bible says What shall it profit a man he uses a business terminology. What shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? He's not endorsing poverty. He's not endorsing failure. He's only saying that all of these things are only tools that you use and men will see Jesus Christ directly glorified in your life. I shared with you my experience with God. Many years ago, the Lord told me this. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord said. Not if you look for fame and a name. No. God is my witness. My passion and my obsession is not to be a man of God and make a name and prove that I'm a successful person now far be it from me I have one desire our heart and our desire is to see the nations worship our cry and our prayer Is to sing your praise to the ends of the earth that we mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our heart. Our prayer. This is what this is all about. Is to see the nations worship you. Your kingdom reigns. Yes, it reigns through my life. Yes, Listen. in my life, 
here and now your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns lord in my life here and now that's your kingdom reign your kingdom reign sing in my life oh god my life. Let me not live my life in a waste, building empires that have no eternity. Your kingdom reign in my life. My life. Your kingdom Had me teach it again and again. Anna wanted a child, but her purpose of wanting a child was to end the mockery of Penina. Are we together now? The Bible says there were the two wives of Elkanah, and many times Penina would mock Hannah because she was barren. And Hannah went to God, but her motive was never aligned to the kingdom. She wanted to use her ability to give birth to prove that she was a woman indeed. And God said, it's not enough reason for me to give you a child. You may want a child. I cannot let you bring a destiny just to prove a point. What then happens when the point has been proven? Oh God, give me a jeep to shame my enemies. God said, it's too small a reason for me to bless you. Make me a millionaire to silence the mouth of wicked men. God says, it's still too small. A time came, Anna said, Lord, I realize I've been selfish. Here is a new proposal. You need a prophet. Can my womb birth that man child? And God said, deal, done. Once she prayed, once she prayed, and a prophet came. I'll tell you the reason why God does not do business with us. We use God, hear me please, the Holy Ghost is speaking. We use God as a ladder to come out of shame to come out of pain, to come out of inferiority. Lord, I want anointing. He says, why? He said, my contemporaries need to know your hand is upon my life. God says, you are joking. You will never, never carry two grace. Lord, I want to get married. Why? Because I, I want to get out of the stigma of singleness. God said, my purpose for marriage is bigger than that. Lord, I want to be a millionaire. Why? There is a brother I need to prove wrong. Your life is too long to live just to prove a point. And God says, when I look at your life, I don't see your obsession for my agenda. There is nothing eternal in the motivations of your pursuit. Are we together? I told God something. Anything you give me, and I'm saying it now, I don't care what it is. If you cannot find where you'll be glorified to it, may it never come to my life. I don't care what it is. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. The Lord Jesus is not a fool. He's not a stupid person. You don't come to him praying, rattling in tongues, whereas in your heart, God already knows that if I give this man one million, I will never get his attention again. Again. God has done it before. There are people he opened up doors for and he watched. His intention was to bless you more than that. But the little he gave, he kept watching. And right now our lives are Ichabod, the departure of the glory. Hallelujah. If there is any message I want you to get today, this is not a message for men of God. It's a message for those who want to be used mightily by God. There are so many things God wants to do with us. But you must get to that point of obsession where first, your love for God, please listen, listen, I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, until your love for God supersedes your desires, you will never find the hand of God in your life. Lord, I hate poverty. And since I found out in the Bible that coming close to you will make me rich, I now come close to you as a means to an end. You will never be prosperous that way. Hallelujah. Listen, 
I speak especially towards the young people. Don't allow what is happening in society to fool you. You are not the first to live your life. You are not the first to be blessed or to be prosperous or to pursue success. There is no true success outside of Christ. Not just going to church and trying to be nice. Seriousness. Sisters have challenged you. Don't marry anybody that is not serious with God. With traceable transformation. No matter what he tells you. He can have all the jeeps, all the whatever it is. But any man that has passion for the things of the Lord. You know, our society has a, a very insulting way of trivializing godliness. Right? No matter what else you have. If you don't have God, it's a waste. But our society has taken it the other way around. If you have God, no matter what else you don't have. They think you are not successful. This is how much he means to us. Why should I keep what people say? For they don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. Listen, get to a point in your life where your entire desire is to see him lifted. If God makes you a millionaire businessman, you are a minister in business, not a Sunday Christian doing every other thing. Where when God empowers you, it is for his kingdom. Are we together? If God gives you intellectual prowess, it's for his kingdom. He gives you beauty for his kingdom. Thank you, sir. He gives you money, it's for his kingdom. He gives you influence, it's for his kingdom. Listen, if God knows you will not withhold his glory, he will not withhold his hand from you too. I am amazed. I am amazed to see the little that God has been able to do through my life. You know, when I see it, people send me all kinds of texts. Man of God, apostle of our generation. And I just look at the text and laugh. For you are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, to the good times and bad, you are. I'm not interested in anything in this life that I cannot find how it will glorify God. If you cannot show me how it will glorify God, I'm not interested. I don't care what it is. You must get to that point where your life, you donate your life to be a promoter of his interest. Anywhere you get to, you find out, Lord, how are you going to be lifted here? He said, if I... If your life is committed to lifting me, there is nothing I will not give you. If your life is committed to lifting me, I will take you beyond every territorial background. Ah! It was, it was Nathaniel that said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Try donating your life to God and see the wonder he will make out of your life. My life is a wonder. My mom called, okay, well, she didn't call, but she sent me a text. Oh, by the way, my mom said she's praying for everyone and that your prayers will be answered throughout this fasting period. My mom is a very anointed woman. Anointed indeed. She's been following in the fasting. Praying also. She was listening to the message. I think it was yesterday's message and she was just weeping. And I told her, you've not seen anything yet. 
if you think you are a failure in life you succeeded in giving birth to me and that's enough reason to be a success forever koinonia come to a point tonight where jesus becomes the focal point the pivot of your life listen there is no such thing as church life and then real life you know people do that this is church they say look look when in rome behave like the romans do it's not in your bible you have to be careful i'm a child of god anywhere right so you pick up your phone and you put a a gospel song and when it is ringing in a business meeting you quickly off it so that it doesn't embarrass you because you want to be neutral jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men please hear me koinonia if you are ashamed of me before men he said i'll be ashamed of you before my father my appetite and my addiction for god i don't know what he did to me i've been captured by your love i can't explain now you have me and i'm forever changed i've abandoned everything i've ever known now i surrender this life is not my own i belong to you i belong to you i belong to you i belong to you you must get to that point that's the first thing i want you to learn come to a point where you are not just born again but you are addicted so you see a pretty lady like this and it's easy to believe that because she's fine my dear if your beauty if god cannot see how your beauty directly glorifies him is nonsense is useless as far as the agenda of god is concerned are we together everything not just your education everything that constitutes an advantage in your life must have a direct bearing if you do this i show you the secret of unbeatable greatness god will bring you out of bless you my dear every storm and put you in a position of notoriety because he knows that your being there is for his namesake is god blessing us tonight one of the things we are going to be crying as we round up this period, awesome period of fasting and prayer. I was talking to the Lord yesterday. I said, Lord, look at what you have done with your child. So many people say all kinds of things. During my birthday, I was so honored last year. We had delegates from over 16 nations calling in to say, look, this is what your teachings are doing, changing people. That's what God can do when you believe him when you really love god you will not have time for pride and arrogance it's not the issue of i want to be i'm stopping it there is a revelation that threatens you to humility at all times all times it's a revelation that's why i run away from all these kinds of things because i've seen the deceitfulness of man he will celebrate you and stab you when you fall people can clap you into death so every time they clap god says remember you are an usher remember our prayer and fasting and so you lead them and say there is one who is mightier than i and i'm not embarrassed i'm not embarrassed to know that i am not here for myself listen this is what jesus said i can of my own do nothing the word of god speaking so helpless i can of my own do nothing brothers and sisters everything you see behind this small life that you see is a product of god's grace is the reward of addiction to the kingdom it's not so much my wisdom the bible says let the wise man not glory in his wisdom right let the strong man not glory in his strength they say but let him that glory at glory in this many years ago the lord told me my only promise to you is my presence god never promised me a car he never promised me fame he never promised me crowd. 
all he promised me was his presence and he has kept that promise if nothing else works in my life i cannot blame god the promise he made was his presence and moses said if your presence go not with us he said we will not depart from here for how shall they know that we are a separate people the presence of god is the mystery behind the magnificent things god is doing in and through this ministry and tonight i'll share two more things and then we are going to pray and say lord i not only give you my heart i give you my life there is a big difference between giving god your heart and giving god your life we used to sing a song remember my lifetime i will give god my lifetime don't play it he says when Abi, if i give god my lifetime he will take care of me now that song is not a good bargain for many people because they say lord i gave you my lifetime and i saw the way you shredded me into pieces we have this idea that when we walk to, with god we will be cheated no no godliness is profitable having the reward here in this life and in the life to come number two the second thing that i want to challenge us is to have a passion for understanding please say after me understanding those outside are you with us shout hallelujah praise the lord understanding the bible says in all thy getting get understanding understanding tells you the dynamics on how a thing works listen A Jimmy's wife made this beautiful cake. I know the ingredients to make a cake, but I don't understand how it works. At least I know that you need flour, you need egg, you need uh, uh, all the other things. Are we together? But she understands how to work. If you want to make fried rice, I may know how to make fried rice, but I'm not sure I understand it. I know in that fried rice there should be rice. There should be liver. My friend is helping me. There should be liver. Carrots. Now listen. But do I know how much of liver? No. Do I know when to put the liver? No. If you give me all those ingredients, let me tell you what I'll do. I will mix everything at once and close it. And the next time I open that pot, I'm lifting it. I don't cook. I don't cook. It's not my ministry. That's the reason why I'm determined to be successful. Because I know that when I'm successful, that lapse will be covered in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, but let, let's get back to our point understanding listen we know many things but we do not know how to combine them to be successful you know there is a place of destiny help us you know there is a place of fasting and prayer are we together you know there is a place of warfare you know there is a place of giving and sacrifice but do you know how to combine them to produce an unbeatable life we need to pray for understanding it's not everything that is just the blood of jesus it's not everything that is just prayer for instance finances is not just the issue of prayer prayer gives you wisdom finances is a covenant it's an understanding right he said thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he that giveth thee the power the anointing the unction to prosper there is such a thing the bible says and i will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places you know that what it takes to do ministry there is a place for leadership and organization there is a place for the anointing right there is a place for people's skills there is a place for endurance and persistence there is a place for for um, competence in the world but do you know how to combine them together many of us right now our problem is not ignorance our problem is understanding of the operation of the systems of the kingdom how to make things work is really revelation not that you are aware knowing what god has said is not revelation knowing how to make it produce results in your life consistent results 
is understanding. Tell your neighbor, get understanding. This is what we have been doing. We've been praying and fasting and we have been taking a thought, a dimension of the keys of the kingdom. Just approaching it, the place of power, the place of destiny help us, the place of favor. You must passionately pray and ask the Lord to give it to you as a personal revelation. Lord, show me if you were to draw a pie chart for me, how much percentage of my life should be dedicated in building relationships? How many should be dedicated in the place of knowledge? How much should be dedicated in warfare? There are people who all they do in their life is to fight warfare. They fight warfare until they are frustrated. They hold night vigils every day. You see, they have stretched the truth beyond its limit of operation. The truths in the kingdom are dimensional. It only profits you when you apply the kingdom uh, within the confines of its relevance. That it is truth does not mean it's applicable anyhow. You must define the boundaries to which its application becomes relevant. Are we together? There is a place tithing and giving holes in kingdom wealth. But it's not just tithing and giving alone. Are we together now? Yeah. If all you do is tithe and give, favor will come, but you do not have wisdom. A house is not built by favor. Through wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding it is established. It said through knowledge, the rooms are filled with every treasure. So we need to know how to combine the correct ingredients and you will make for an unbeatable life. Number three, maybe I'll just say that and then I'll stop there. Number three, I have emphasized it again and again. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Listen, there is the place of your mentality, your mindset, your paradigm. Mindsets are conditionings. Mindsets are perspectives. Mindsets are opinions. Mindsets are constructions, planes, perspectives of judgment. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, let this mind, there was an understanding, there was a, a mental state that Jesus was in. That's why he succeeded. And the Bible says, permit it to be in you in the same way it was with Jesus Christ. When God called Abraham, he was a man who was in a place called Ai of the Chaldeans. He was an idol worshiper. And based on his mindset and understanding, there were certain things that were impossible. And God needed to stretch his mind. Look at me, please. You can get my message pulling down strongholds. I have seen as a leader, as a man of God, how many great people potentially have been limited because they cannot tear that mental barrier to give them space to be used by God. Scattered among us here are all kinds of people. Hallelujah. Please, I need two people here. Where is promise? Where is Charles? Charles protocol. Can you come? Please, quickly. Hallelujah. I want to use them as an example. Wherever he is, if he's within reach, let him come. I want to use him as an example. If your mindset does not change, your life cannot move forward. Please, this is not some psychology, sociological reality. Unfortunately, we come from backgrounds where there are conditionings over our minds. There are people, for instance, who have been taught, listen, there are people who have been taught that you will never succeed. You will never amount to anything. You came from a background where everybody was a failure. And that conditioning has been there. I am a failure. I don't expect to succeed. I don't expect things to work for me. Do you know the Bible says in Psalms, I think 78, 41 or so, it says they limited him in the wilderness. Hallelujah. I want to use these two gentlemen. Please don't be offended. I've used them again and again because they are great people. Where is Francis? Can you join him please? Francis, your friend. 
Where is he? Come, 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 quickly. Appreciate him. Do you mind if I share your testimony again? <laughs> Look what he's doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I spoke to you about this guy. He came to Zaria with dreadlocks. Dreadlocks and earrings. That's how he came into the city. Can you imagine? This is the assistant head of prayer, de the prayer, the prayer department. Yeah. I'll tell you why. Believe me, he was not a bad boy. He was a victim of an understanding. Because he probably grew up in an environment and where he was schooling before, the occult groups thought that if you were a capon, right, then they associated violence and rebellion with greatness. Listen, life is always proposing an ideology to you about a true definition of success and you must return to the word of God and re-edit your template, your value system. Look at his life right now. A testament of a transformed mind. Let me tell you a very funny story. Thank you, sir. This gentleman, you mind if I share your testimony? Now, let me tell you how he came to this ministry. He saw a lady that he liked. He was an occultist. Came all the way from another state. Listen. Oh, he's very born again, I can tell you. Born again and successful. And wealthy as a matter of fact. Hallelujah. He saw a lady. One of my ladies. And saw her and said, Ah! You know, all these occultic things and so on and so forth. And as he followed her, she gladly led him. Just keep coming. He was like a sheep to the slaughter, not knowing what was going to happen to him. Listen, that's beauty used for the kingdom. I'm not saying you go to a beer parlor and tell somebody, follow me. God did not send you there. Let me balance it up front. Because I can't assume, in our generation today, you must explain everything. Everything. Praise the Lord. And this is what happened. It was you that brought him, right? Now, this guy came that night. He got born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, transformed completely that night. His friends gave him seven days to return back to his lifestyle. Seven days have become over six or seven years or thereabout. Never to return again. He was so impacted. He went and dragged this one and said, just come. Are we together now? I'm not sure this guy had an idea what was going to happen to him. And he dragged him and brought him. Let me tell you what happens in this place. You are first saved and the next mission is your mental transformation. Until your ideology is changed, you are not really born again. Believe me when I tell you this. And see what God has made. They are serving in the body, doing great things for the kingdom. These are the guys responsible for your bosses. They have a direct... Did you know he could not speak Hausa? But he speaks Hausa right now because he had to learn it so that he will be effective as the, as the boss coordinator. Can you imagine that? That's passion for the kingdom. And I pray, guys, may God bless you. I love you with all my heart. May God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Who is your life changing? From the time they came into your life, have their understandings changed? Now you see, we we that you are well meaning does not mean you are transformed. Separate being nice societally. I don't steal, I don't kill, I don't fornicate. It's not the same as transformation. Transformation is the process that makes you like Christ, and it is not a gift, it's a reward. You will labor to get into that state. Transformation requires admitting. That something about your thinking is destroying your life. There are people who are born again but they are greedy. There are people who are born again but they are angry. I counsel a lot of people. And sometimes you see couples. I remember one couple, very interesting. Uh, I mean, and they had been married for a while. Not just two years, five years. And they fought. They fought police had to come and stop them. So two of them said they were coming to report themselves. And they booked for counseling. Husband and wife. Two of them sat down. Madam, what's the problem? This man does not respect me. And she was just landing it. And the man kept quiet. When I finished, he said, Man of God, you are seeing what made me beat this woman. And the truth is, both of them love themselves. But everybody was coming with the idea of his territory. Somebody told that guy, When you beat your wife, she will respect you. 
Are you getting that information? He stored it in his pocket. Somebody told the lady, if you are weak to a man, he will disrespect you. If he punches you, you roll your hand and punch him back. So, listen, all of them are executing their ideologies. There are pastors who believe, their thinking is that if you want to be rich, be a pastor. Because you will receive prophet's offering, etc. You see that? So, their ideology led them to fast for 40 days. They created names. They created protocol. Are we together now? Very important. Listen. Let this mind that I have labored and I still do with all my heart. I don't trust myself outside of the word of God. I don't even know what I can become. I started a project years ago. Not a project to become a preacher. Because when I contrasted the word of God to my mindset, I was, I was messed up in almost everything. My understanding of leadership, my understanding of ministry, my understanding of almost everything. The pastors that trained me did not teach me prosperity was a blessing from God. They sang songs like, take the world and give me Jesus. No, no, I won't sing that song at all. I, my heart is to God, but I realize that prosperity is an important tool in kingdom building. And I will never mislead you. I'm not apologetic about it. Poverty and prosperity, which one is better? Don't let a poor man who has never been blessed carry his stumbling block and come to you and tell you, see how simple my life is. You are, if you are healed, you are healed for yourself. If you are saved, you are saved for yourself. Only prosperity is shareable. That's why Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. The gospel is free, but the means to carry it to the lost is not free. Are we together now? Yeah. Your mindset. Something about your village. Something about the thinking, your upbringing. There are ladies here, for instance, our mothers, though well-meaning and sincere, have taught us that when you want to get money from a man, do A, B, C. Men are very stupid people. This is how to collect money from them. You are born again, you pray in tongues, but that mindset is still in you. Are we together? There are people who still do what I call traditional Christianity. They love God, but when the going gets tough, they call you and say, come home. And you know what that means. Come home means revisit your roots. And you go back and they give you your husband in a bottle. They carve clear and put it inside and say, for as long as you are holding this bottle, this is your husband. Do with him as you please. I have counseled people who brought charms. I mean, they removed it and said, man of God, I won't lie to you. This is it. I said, what is this for? He said, for money. And I said, but you don't look rich. Meaning it's not working. <laughs> oh, or this one is for, um, I, I remember counseling some ladies. Now, this is not to condemn you. True story. They may even be here. Don't feel offended. Some ladies who said they, they went, was it Zaria City to collect something? True story. Something like a powder or something. You, you rub it. I don't know if it's the, you rub it or bath with it. And any man that sees you, no matter what is, except he's really born again, indeed, with a track record in the spirit, otherwise he will follow you like a sheep. And I looked at them. I said, you mean this is what you are doing to yourself? Something in your mind is limiting your destiny right now. Hallelujah. I began a project to change my mind. There were some things I never saw growing up. I knew that if I needed to be a global leader, there was a thinking. Africa teaches us to be mediocre and failures. Our mentality in Africa is comparing with our, ourselves with ourselves. They say, I'm a family of seven people. And right now, I'm the first person to buy a Pujo. And we keep making noise over it. Whereas God is saying, there are great things I want to do with you. Please, that mindset must die tonight. There are even territories associated with certain levels of mediocrity. Have you heard people say that? Men from this place, they are irresponsible. Women from this place, they are, uh, uh, what, they, are, they are immoral. You can change that in the name of Jesus Christ. I know that the people from, from my village, the core people in the village, I grew up knowing that they used to drink. Drink seriously. Why? I don't know. But I reject that testimony. Count me out. I'm not part of it. Are we together now? 
don't say because I grew up seeing it happen. You grew up seeing people oppress people to be blessed. But you are going to change and say no. My mind has changed. My mind has changed. Based on the power of the word of God. I found out that Jesus was not the Jesus that was taught in the Bible. The Jesus pastors preach as a wicked, cruel God out to kill and destroy people. But my Bible says it is the thief that comes to steal and kill and to destroy. I never give up on people. No matter what has happened because the Bible says there is hope for a tree. He said at the scent of water, never give up on people. We are going to pray. But I'm challenging us, especially with the young people. There is a mindset we must change. And the Bible says, by the truth. By the truth. Something about your conditioning will make you fail in life if you don't change it. Something about your understanding may make you a bad father, a bad mother. That you are well-meaning is not enough. You must have the mind of Christ. Please lay your hands on your head. And say, in spite of the mindset of my culture, in spite of my background, in spite of the limitations of Nigeria and my territory, I change my mindset. I declare that I come from a kingdom that is foreign to this earth. And I refuse to be limited in the name of Jesus years ago when God was showing me the visions of the things that are happening today I saw these things and they were great and brothers and sisters half of this have not even come to pass what you see now is child's play it's just one step out of the cave hallelujah and God showed me these things but he was waiting for me to agree with him please come here Jimmy listen this is God saying Ejimi see how far he said as far as your eyes can see but Ejimi is standing oh I come from a background I come from Ijebode there is a limitation there are all kinds of things and God is saying I can do so much with you I can smash that barrier you say Lord I went to school at 25 when my colleagues are doing masters that's when I'm passing jam and God is saying no Abraham started his ministry almost 75 years old. Are we together? Change your mindset. Change your mindset. Change your mentality. Change your understanding. I made up my mind. Listen. I made up my mind that there are things Africa will never limit in my life. There are things in my mind and beyond the spheres of this place. It's not pride. It's the truth. I didn't get it just by prayer he said I Daniel understood by books there is a labor of knowledge I've studied the largest churches in every continent studied them carefully Forbes list of billionaires I've studied all of them one by one it's not just prayer please I'm telling you you must agree that something you know is limiting you when it was time to set up Covenant University Bishop Oyeniko sent delegates to comprehensively study Cambridge Yale Harvard right and, and which Oxford I think these four or five top universities and then he now added a kingdom dimension to their limitation and said this becomes a structure of our, our university Koinonia is patterned after an understanding there is somewhere we are going we have seen that it's possible to combine the anointing with excellence and we are striving to increase that you you should not choose one and leave the other god wants to do great things with you and today he's asking you do you believe i used to say it when we used to meet um, on the floor that time we did not even have mat on the floor that we are all going to be great in this life and the beautiful part is that we we'll all know ourselves. People of God, there is more that God wants to do. Say there is more that God can do with my life. 
I refuse to be a local champion. Say it, I refuse to be a local champion. Ejimi's wife had been making cakes long before she got married. She's been making cakes, but she made up her mind that she wanted to be world class. And I got to find out that all her time in Lagos, she had dedicated it. This is an economist. But because this was the area of her passion, she started taking certifications, UK-based certifications, and all kinds of certifications to be extraordinary. The fruit of it is what we are seeing today. Who is ready to pay you for your transformation? Have you been so developed that you become priceless? This can't be it. God is so much bigger than this prophesy to yourself this can't be it this can't be it he is so much bigger than this so he's calling you deeper that's what he's saying deeper Calling you deeper, deeper, it's calling you deeper. You know why we are not celebrating Koinonia now? My concept of birthdays is not that you were born, is that you are living out the purpose for being born. I am personally convinced that nobody has a right to celebrate birthday until you know why you are on earth and your life is experientially blessing people. A day will come we'll make noise about Koinonia when we build the schools. Remember I told you about our schools. My goodness, bring your children to our schools. Yes, we are adding three extra courses. Spiritual growth, a course called Koinonia and financial intelligence. Every student, they will learn it from primary school. Hallelujah. Yes. Part of spiritual growth will introduce a program called honesty, morality, and conscience. We have a society that numbs conscience. You kill somebody and say it does not matter. The end justifies the means. No, sir. A Christian, the process to the result is as important as the result. When we launch the TV stations and we are doing great things, we can turn and then pat our back now we we'll lie to ourselves because compared to where god is taking us it's a step out of the cave people are already clapping and i told god block my ears in jesus name block my ears you need to learn to challenge yourself raise standards don't say i'm better than somebody no that's a foolish way of progress the bible says and they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise we used to sing a song when we were preparing for our crusade. Ask and I'll give the nations to you. Listen, if you wanted me to cry, raise that song. That was the song that brought tears from my eyes. Because every time they raised the song, I saw nations. The Bible didn't say you are a village. It said you are a city. You may start from where you are, but don't die where you are. You started from Zaria. Oh, my father is a carpenter. My mother was frying a car. So what? The Bible says, ask for the nations and I will give you. I'm speaking to people here. We are going to pray. Ask and I'll give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and deep. It rises or not. One more time. Ask and now give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Listen. You must challenge yourself to be exceptional. Listen, listen. Sandra just came in this evening. I was very touched when she came in. Something very remarkable happened. This lady you are seeing within three months has done three jobs. She works directly with the house of assembly. 
it's not about lobbying it's the power of competence and the keys of the kingdom it was the official car that brought her to Zaria but people say there is no job it depends on what your understanding is brothers and sisters please hear me don't let this country cheat you people are shouting the dollar the pound even those who have never seen it are already victims of it hallelujah it was a humorous story please permit me to share it. one of her former bosses where she was working started doing some funny things like wanting to sleep with her or something and, and you know all you know all these men that behave as if their heads are not correct may god punish anyone that wants to destroy the destiny of anybody in the name of jesus christ you are entitled to one wife and god designed it to be enough anything more than that you need deliverance say amen, amen. if there's anybody our fathers, mothers who are planning another marriage in the name that is above all names, we cancel it right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. I just felt like pressing that one in so that we don't let it just pass like that. And listen, the moment, thank you. Thank you very much. She has an understanding that you cannot be disadvantaged, it's a mentality. As that one was trying to play all of that nonsense, another one came, born again, honorable member. And he looked at her in 24 hours. She got a new job, upgraded with salary and everything. Brothers and sisters, listen, this thing will work for you if you know how to work it. If, if you think what is happening, people are just talking. No, sir. I think it was Pastor Alpha when you started your PhD. They get, I mean, it was, it was challenging over scholarship and this. But you can see him coming here. He's doing his PhD. And he's on, I think you're on scholarship. He's on scholarship from University of Joss. And he's just enjoying life. See, I'd like you to say, it must happen differently with me. Refuse that thing of, of, of the way it's happening to everybody. No, there is an anointing upon you. Remember, there is an anointing upon you. Please, we are going to rise up and we'll pray. We are rounding this up. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. Status is changing. Status is changing. It's no more decline. No more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. Sorry, the Lord is hearing you. My status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way to that day. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. On my way. points i like us to pray please let's have the communion we have to be very fast because i want to speak there are destinies that must open up today hallelujah prayer point number one lord a fresh passion for you above beyond money faith ministry business going on your lift your voice and pray lord a fresh passion a fresh passion Shake it back at the baba baba baba. Coin on your brain. Shake it back at the very most. A fresh passion. You, oh Lord, at my desire. I desire you more than my necessary food. Oh, better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. Pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Revelation chapter 5. Hallelujah. Revelation 5. Please, I'd like us to be sensitive. The communion is a mystery. Jesus said, except ye eat 
of my body and drink of my blood. He said, you cannot have my life. The communion is a mystery. What we're going to do will be very, very fast. As soon as we do this, our prayer request as instructed by God. Now, we'll collect it in twofold, but that's... Maybe when we are praying, we'll be doing that so that we can have it. Ushers, please make sure you get ready. The ones that represent your challenges, according to Exodus 14:14, 14, 14, I'd like you to pass it first because we are going to burn it right now. That's the instruction that the Lord gave, please. And then the ones that represent your testimonies, when you give that one, I'll ask you to forward that one and we'll pray on it here just like we do the miracle service. Please, ushers, quickly, quickly, you have to be very fast. Our time is gone. While you're holding it, I'd like you to begin to pray and say the blood of Jesus is ending this captivity in my life forever. Please pray from the depth of your heart. Pray. The Bible says the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit for they are spiritually discerned. The Lord gave us an instruction. Please just pass it round. The one that represents challenges, pass it to the last person so that the ushers will receive it. Just the challenges, just the challenges. There are two requests. Your expectations, your challenges, pass the challenges very quickly. Hallelujah. Revelations 5 verse 12. Saying with a loud voice. Worthy is the lamb. Not worthy is the king. Not worthy is Jesus. There is a dimension he used to purchase these things for us. And is that dimension as a lamb. The lamb that was what? Slain. It was on account of his being slain. On account of his blood. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive. He has received for us. Power. Riches. Wisdom. Strength. Honor. Glory. And blessing. Notice it did not say blessings. It says blessing. Now look up please. I want you to be sensitive. The blessing. Is an operation of the Holy Spirit upon a man's life. Please listen. The blessing is different from blessings. The blessing is an operation of the Holy Spirit. It's like an anointing. When it comes upon your life like a mantle, the assignment of the blessing is to compel creation to respond to you as though you were in the Garden of Eden. Please listen. When God made man, he blessed them. When the flood came, God blessed Noah. It was, it was um, Isaac that said, make me venison that I will eat, that my soul will rejoice, that I may bless you. What did he give Jacob? That when Esau came, he said, there's nothing left. How did he know it had left him? Listen, the blessing is transferable. You can carry it bodily. God opened my eyes to this revelation and it surprised me. Hallelujah. The blessing does three things. Number one, it attracts people, it attracts resources, and it attracts opportunities. Never forget this. The blessing on you mysteriously but undeniably begins to attract people he said, all men seek for thee. That's what they told Jesus. All men seek for thee. The blessing can make your critics bless you. Although they are talking against you. The blessing can make people you do not know. He said, your gates.
shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Hallelujah. We are going to pray and say, Lord, as I partake of this communion, every, every pronouncement, every cause of negativism over my life, the blessing will take it away today forever. Lift your voice and pray, please. Lift your voice and pray. The blessing is coming upon me. The blessing will change my life. The blessing will veto the limitations of my background and take me to another dimension. Please pray. It doesn't take time. It takes the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to bless the communion. This is ordinary wine and wafers. But the Bible says, Is this not the cup of the blessing? The cup of the blessing there is a mystery it gives you access to receive that mantle i have seen the blessing work i know it works hallelujah now we have to be very fast there are several overflows and please i need you to cooperate with all the people leading there we're going to be very very fast you will come pick the cup and the wafers and drop it if there's anyone under the anointing ushers please as they fall under the anointing shift them away so that we can hurry up on this we have just about 10 or so minutes to do this because we need to prophesy something must come upon your life hallelujah immediately after that please prepare while worship is going on we'll raise high, high praise for two to five minutes and then we'll burn those things and we'll speak father in the name of jesus this is ordinary wafers I stretch my hands over this and the ones outside in all of the overflows one two three outside down to the roadside let this lose its earthly significance as wafers and wine I pray the Bible says in Hosea chapter 12 it says I have multiplied visions I have spoken to you through the prophets he said I have used similitudes may the power of the highest the power that is responsible for performance come upon these wafers come upon this wine in the name of Jesus that everyone who partakes by faith may they step into a strange order of the blessing in the name of Jesus God bless you there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name of Jesus, to break every chain. Please, let's come and just take some your seats. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power. There is power. In the name of everyone should partake of the communion everyone including children if you can give them please give it to them god bless you can we help? we have to be very fast please very fast just pick one and then make your way very quickly break every chain break every chain break every chain to break every chain break every chain break every chain there is power there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. What's happening there? Why the delay? Please stand back let our parents come you are just watching you should direct them please 
Break every chain. 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 There's an army. There's an army rising. There's an army. There's an army rising now. They will break every chain. 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 Casting crowns. Lifting hands. Breaking arms. What I've come to do I'd like you to begin to pray in tongues. Pray in tongues for what is coming upon you. Pray in tongues in the spirit. Go ahead and begin to pray as you return back to your seat. Please, we have to be fast. Just pick the wine, the bread, and then you can give way for others. There is an anointing upon it. Please, as you walk, just come out very fast. We have to be very fast. Beautiful you are, wonderful you've been, you are glorious, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward, you are glorious, my God.
Please pray. You say, Lord, something must land upon my life tonight. An anointing must come upon me. An unction from the Holy One must swallow up every challenge in my life. Pray like a believer that you are. Pray like a believer that you are. You are able to change the stories of men, oh God. You are able to change the stories of men. Communion is yet to come. Just be patient and pray. You can take the bread and just be patient. Please, if the welfare need help, can we have some hands to help them? Rando soto Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command the gates that hold the next level of my life be open now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Please pray from your heart. Command the gates. The gates kapa superadaba, zikete kete pras karababa, supere kuto supere dis kalaba, brands kapa rato shoto prete kete. Gates be open, be open, be open, be open. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every cause of hardship. My family. My loved ones. By the mystery of the blood. I bring it to an end right now. Lift your foot and begin to pray. The cause of hardship, the cause of pain, the cause of sorrow, the cause of pain, the cause of sorrow. Loved ones, we bring it to an end. We bring it to an end. We bring it to an end by the power. We bring it to an end in the name of Jesus. We bring it to an end in the name of Jesus. We bring it to an end 
we bring it to an end by the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, every covenant I enter into, knowingly or knowingly, is responsible for the failure in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to take authority over every sickness. Every strange manifestation in your body. The Bible says your body, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Every tree that has not been planted by my father tonight the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus no sickness HIV must live Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing the sound of padlocks. That's what I'm hearing in my ears. Please, I'd like you to be very sensitive now. I want to pray for you. Inside and outside. We have prayed. The number eight stands for new beginning. It must leave you. Everything that has not been by the ordinances of heaven it must leave you right now lift your hands as i pray for you i tell you the fire of god will fall in this place please shift all these things our time is almost up but we must deal with these things when i finish praying at the count of three i like you to shout jesus with all your heart i hear sounds like an opening of a padlock This apostolic anointing, every gate, every altar, every destiny, every family of the church, of the youth, every fraternity, the activities of necromancers, the people of men's destinies.
Lift Hallelujah. I see at least 30 ladies. 30. 30 sisters. Strange things that come to you in the night as you sleep. Right now as I begin to pray, the fire will begin to set you free. Right now. Look. 30 of them. At least they are fighting. Entity. Falling. I see God doing a lot of things with ladies, ladies especially, ladies, sisters, sisters, strange spirits that oppress the destinies of people, strange spirits that tie down people, sisters at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, I see the king of Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. The Lord is showing me the cause of death over certain families. I see at least 13 families. It's like a mantle. People die strangely. Keep your hands lifted. I'm about to pray right now. Father, wherever you are right now, you spirit of Shout that name Jesus at the count of three. I'm seeing chains of people's foot outside. Chains. And I'm to release you to deliver. Three. find them hallelujah i want to pray for you this is an impartation now this is not deliverance this is going to come mighty on many of us listen there is an anointing that makes men succeed you have prayed there is an anointing that makes men succeed bring this gentleman this is madness that's what I'm saying. Leave him right now. I command you. You must go. Right now. And never return. 
restore the fortunes of his family right now in the name of Jesus Christ for there is a name that is above every other name let him go free in the name of Jesus please if you miss this you have wasted your fast this is the time i want you to open up your heart we have to suspend the number of, help them please so they don't enjoy themselves we have to suspend the number of things right now because we are supposed to be praying on the request i don't want to keep us too long here but you have to receive this there is an empowerment that can change a man's life please listen hear me when i tell you there is an anointing that can change a man it's not by might it's not by power i want you to receive this with all your heart there will be a mighty impartation lift your hands father there is nothing i have that did not come from you your people have fasted they have prayed it's time for them to enter on usual levels of accomplishments i stand upon this selection of grace according to the measure of the gift of christ in my life at the count of three let the heavens be open and let there be strange impartations For the heads of department please where are you quickly just come up here there is an anointing upon me don't stop don't stop be sensitive please in the name of jesus you will step into strange levels of grace join them it's not by might it's not by power in the name of jesus greater fire greater grace step into new dimensions of wisdom fire in the name of jesus drink of the of the spirit greater levels greater fire in the name of jesus greater fire can i pray for you? a new level of what 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 said the spirit of i bring you to a new level a new dimension of what and grace in the name of jesus please lift your hands I pray you. the anointing to pray is going to hit some of you like a tornado. My God, stand up to pick up him. ministry i want to release it upon you not something you beg for there is a mantle the bible says and japanese was more honorable than his brethren i pray for you at least hallelujah worship him hold your hands i see a fresh unction for psalmistry hold your hands i want to pray for you father in the name of jesus i pray for the instrumentals to everybody right now that fire comes on you one by one as i stroke my hands take it right now take it right now new to 
chemistry, spirit, new option, new form. Something's from heaven. Something's from heaven. Something's from heaven. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you everything that was lost shall be returned to you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored to you. Everything that was lost. Hallelujah. Ralph, lift your hands. There is a mantle of success coming upon you right now. Take it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. You are a military man, you are a pastor, but God is about to distinguish you. I see a connection with generals, generals in the army. The Lord is saying that's what he's doing for you. He will do it by his spirit. He will do it by his grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are they? Okay, come Victor quickly. Yerima, come quickly. Okay, there are the heads of departments left. He will step into new levels. It's not by power. It's not by might. Step into that strange dimension of the spirit. Right now in the name of Jesus new dimensions of creativity new dimensions of power new dimensions of power i pray for those who are students here hallelujah everyone here marked for death marked for death pastor Femi the Lord is visiting your family I see an altar of fire that's what I'm seeing an altar this altar has tied down your family I'm seeing particularly your father your father this altar has tied him down tied him down nothing he does prospers but the Lord is saying I'm changing it I'm changing it. Listen, I don't care what you have lost in the name that is above all names. I pray for you. Pursue. There is an anointing for favor please believe me you argue this life will punish you in a serious way there is an anointing for favor he said i will lose the loins of kings you will suck the breast of kings that's what the bible says lord i pray the mysterious anointing upon this ministry that commands unusual favor i pray for you wherever you are like fire it comes upon you right now. Take it, take it, take it right now. Receive it. Receive it inside out. I want to release the blessing my life is a product of the blessing it's an operation of the spirit that attracts people that's what is responsible for this crowd you're seeing 
I cannot fully explain it. But I know that it's dangerously mysterious. It's an anointing that gives you access. Uncommon access. I have met kings. I have met politicians. I have met noble men. I have met billionaires. I have met strange men. Brothers and sisters, I will lie to you if I tell you it's just because my name is Joshua Selman. There is such an anointing. I want to release it upon you. It's called the blessing. I pray for you. My God and my King, I stand upon my bare foot tonight in the name that is above all names as touching this anointing God has given me. At the count of three, three, Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. In one minute. I like us to pray for all our elderly ones who have come to honor us from the depth of your heart prophesy upon them pray for our mothers our fathers scattered all over here in one minute lord we multiply your grace Sorry, we may not have time to do all of that. Our time is gone. We are very, very late. But I want to pray here. Exodus 16, 16 14, 14. Don't turn there. Our time is gone. When they got to the Red Sea, listen, the Egyptians were behind, coming with fury and anger. Before them, the Red Sea, and they were afraid. And Moses said, fear not he says stand still and you will see the salvation of the lord he said these egyptians you see today you will see them no more i pray for you every challenge you wrote before the god of israel i come tonight in the form of the book as it has been written that challenge hallelujah I pray for your expectations tonight is the night of manifestation if you have it lift it up if you don't lift if you don't have it lift your hands please the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among men and we beheld its glory father I pray from the realm of the spirit there is a mystery of manifestation he said the spirit and the bride says come come to us the spirit and the word materializes things every please if you are holding even if it's for your loved ones don't worry 
just lift it to God I'm praying these expectations between now and the end of this month we turn them into testimonies Listen, your eyes have seen them, your ears have heard them. Now I command your hands to handle them. I command your hands to handle them. By the mystery of divine supply, there was a raven that brought food for Elijah at Brook Cherid. I don't care what needs to be done for these expectations to materialize, the power to make it happen. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. And one more time, I call your helpers. Helpers of your destiny. Hear the word of the Lord. From the north to the south, the east and the west, wherever you are, between now and next week, show me the life of God's people. Show me the life of God's people. Show people I declare to you this is the least level you will ever be in life everything that has not been working in your life go back to it now I command you to walk I command you to walk everyone come jobless yeah between now and April no matter how long it has been we put a job in your hands by prophecy in the name Jesus everyone on any building project here that has been grounded the finishers are not in comes upon that project in the name of Jesus I pray for you beginning from tonight that mark of honor and greatness whoever sees your face I command them to bless you whoever looks upon your face I command the release of favor oh, you shall from today be called Beulah and Hepzibah you shall be called Beulah that well with that garden and Isaac blessed his son and he said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed I pray for you may a fragrance live your life tonight and attract everyone who should bless you in the name of Jesus lift your hands and give Jesus praise for tonight's service hallelujah please make reference to my teaching activating seasons of greatness there I teach that the key to greatness in life is favor and I teach that there are two dimensions of favor. There is favor with God and favor with men. The Bible says, and the boy Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. I told you that it is possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. So I told us that the key to having favor with God, there are three things that I taught us. I'm just recapping on the teaching. Three things. Number one, I told us, is called the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence. Reverence. Priority. Respect for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, I told us our tithing. 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 I can't remember what I said the third one was. But then, I remember teaching us that when it comes to favor with men there is a requirement and the Lord asked me to recap it I'm telling you God has an agenda with us this year praise the Lord God wants to break barriers and not only cause us to be healing people and bless people but God wants to make people and families prosper are you getting what I'm saying it's a very serious issue in many families and I told you this is Bethel Praise the Lord. Diligence. Everybody say diligence. We are going to talk a bit, just a few minutes on diligence. What is diligence? Diligence is the virtue of hard work. The virtue of thoroughness. Diligence and mastery, really. 
diligence and mastery the ultimate key to attracting uncommon favor in this realm and in this system please pay attention is diligence and mastery hallelujah praise the lord by the grace of god one of the things that god has helped us to understand is the balance an understanding on how the kingdom works, the components of the kingdom. Now, we have a lot of people who leave everything all to God. They say, Jesus has died. He's paid all the price. He should come to me freely. You will, you will be broke and you will fail in life if that is the circumference of your belief about God. On the other hand, we have people who are just hustlers. They want to make it by any means and they throw away the God factor. Both are wrong. Are you getting me? Diligence and mastery. Two keys. I've been challenging us last, um, I think it was last week, I did challenge us in this light again. Um, what is mastery? Mastery means comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or area. Comprehensive knowledge, skill, proficiency competence Genesis 41 please quickly Genesis 41 from verse 36 to 46 just 10 verses and let's look at one case study in the Bible Genesis 41 There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse thirty-six. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now. Revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. Verse 36 says, And that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not in famine. Verse 37. The Bible says, And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you're there? One to read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, in whom the Spirit of God is? He said, Can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, This interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise. And set him over this project. That during the seven years they will gather plenty. And during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy. And Pharaoh said, who is the person? In other words, he threw a challenge to the entire Egypt. Can we find such a man? If you know you are that qualified. If you know you are that proficient, step up. No race was mentioned. He didn't say if you are an Egyptian. Or if you are a Jew. He said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? Such a skilled person? Such a proficient person? And the Bible says there was none. And then, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has shown thee this thing, there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art. He was not just lifted because he was a he was a of, of the covenant and, and all of that. No, the Bible says the king testified, Pharaoh. He said, There is none, there is none who is as discreet and wise, and because of that, verse 40. Thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting. No discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne shall i be greater than thou 41 and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt and pharaoh took off his ring a symbol of authority and put it on joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of linen and put a gold chain about his neck 44 43 and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and he cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of egypt verse 44 and pharaoh said unto joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of egypt look at that 45 says and pharaoh called joseph you know called him all the name and he gave unto him his wife asenad and the daughter of potiphar priest of own and joseph went all over the land of egypt the last verse and joseph was how many years old how many years old joseph was 30 years old when he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and joseph went out of the presence of pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of egypt everybody say diligence say proficiency listen to me the world that we live in right now if you want the favor favor that's the reward system of the kingdom the favor of god many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access i told you that you need to get my teachings the full gospel there i give you a balanced view of the dimension of god's grace and favor because i told you every christianity that makes god absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible christianity read from genesis to revelation every time god wanted to bless a man he demanded partnership on his own part is that true it's not all up to god and it's not all up to you your own part is to be diligent to gain mastery hallelujah i began to teach last week and i said that there are so many people in the body of christ they are poor they are average they are poor at their place of work they are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do different ministers of the gospel they want crowd they want grace they want fame they want popularity but there is no diligence no diligence no mastery right a man of god comes to stand on stage and says don't worry don't mind what i'm saying just believe that the power of god will touch you let me tell you something when you see a congregation gather like this they are a mixed multitude not everybody is a daft are you getting what i'm saying there are people who walk with god there are people who are intellectuals there are people who are committed to making an impact i told you excellence is a language those who are excellent understand the language it calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence is god speaking to us now god wants to prosper us but let me tell you our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery we must contend for diligence. Joseph, so many people in Egypt, the question I always ask is, didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a Pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son and to make Joseph a prize, it wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exalt Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. 
you submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one according to their several ability. He had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life, especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500000 Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I'm the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me. Influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies. To buy into your perspectives about life. When you are a man of influence, you sustain an ability that causes men to love your God, to love your principles. That's influence. The kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts. Right? And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. People who are broke, suffering, failures in life but are just crying and say lord we love you sooner or later it will affect you when there is no food in your house you will not be able to fast you see the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money uncle or auntie remember we spoke last last um last week right dependency mentality take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent a lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you. What you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing you, don't, you, are not, you are not following the principles. 
There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic, they make blunders on stage. No Bible study, prayer life zero, right? Their comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy called to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk. They cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph. Same story with Daniel. He reigned through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty-six to twenty-eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight. I tell you. Verse twenty-six. Are we there? It says, "And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zerada, Solomon's servant, whose mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah." A widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo's and repaired the breaches in the city of david his father verse 28 it says and the man jeroboam was a what a mighty man of valor as a result and solomon seeing the young man that he was what that he was what he didn't say that he was anointed he didn't say that he was a jew he didn't say that he was a male he said he was a mighty man of valor do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty man of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous, made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jesus. Seeing that he was industrious, he said, no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. 
Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God opened doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you, both in the church and in the secular environment, the minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down, they say, Kai, Ken, ah, that song. And you say, really? You, you see how you are deceiving yourself? We, our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast. Because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. 
a workman who needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community, you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us, please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss. And say, this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months, he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy physically lazy we're in a hurry to show quick success we're in a hurry to show that things are working life is not like that the Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will Proverbs Proverbs what? 10 verse 4 who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs, after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shiva la kura sibraniana balaba. 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business fervent in spirit serving the Lord it said not slothful the word slothful there means laggy you are not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes right it said not slothful in business diligent, fervent zealous in spirit serving the Lord so you want to serve the Lord you want to serve his body you must be competent Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether they write Apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene. To see an incompetent person boasting is a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office. 
at the bio bio what biotech that biotech place and when i went in i looked at his office and i looked at everything i said wow it's not about size it's about content are you getting what i'm saying it's about content at least i know that there is a project that they are on now projects of of hundreds of millions competence when you become competent let me tell you brothers and sisters all of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter jeroboam the bible says his mother was a widow meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much but competence please there are many of us here it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents they didn't go to school they done their best don't sit down in the average there and keep forcing your mother your father the poor people doing their best rise up and change your status don't just sing it as a song is god speaking to anyone here i read the story of joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people joseph was 30 years 30 years and as a matter of fact out of that 30 years about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. what he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches and they will find him and not even ask what is it nobody will ask whatever and say come we are willing to pay you huh and you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say lord this church i already see my destiny no matter what you saw in your dream i guarantee you if you are not diligent you won't enter into it praise the lord you are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to. There will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around, you came late and said, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. 
but the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place sharpen yourself become exceptional the bible says and john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance when john appeared with uncanny accuracy he knew that this was jesus he said behold the lamb behold the lamb he didn't mistake in jesus for john the beloved he didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place gideon defeated the midianites he stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready look at david david looks at goliath and while others are chickening out david comes he ran to him that's what competence does it gives you confidence when others are running away you say where is the challenge They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something you buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? 
whatever your hand find it to do. That's what my Bible says. It said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver word in season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job. Another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared. When you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming and I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself 
getting an exact blueprint of his assignment, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then, together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David, my servant, Psalm 89, verse 20, downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David sins, but he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil, I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle, the architect of that construction, he was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you, when God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark. For the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your play your own part and tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you like Saul you will go back and they will say ah, ah is Saul also one of the prophets when did you enter this dimension favor is when preparation meets opportunity it's not magical it's a formula and God is calling us wipe the tears of your family Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that, you must make up your mind, brothers and sisters, that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and i send you like the foxes of samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar i've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry...
Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Shekele Baba. Never will I be termed forgotten, but I will be called Pula. Pula, the land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business, mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out. In my generation, I must stand out. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I'd like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says for our light afflictions, which is what for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. 
when you are competent nations will celebrate you without bias they will celebrate you they will demand your grace they will pay for it Praise the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. insist that you must be touched this night insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down and waste your time make sure you cry unto God tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the Lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. Let it rain. Open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. 
I don't care what the issue is. Let your faith rise right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I see sick people all around inside and outside. And I see all kinds of people. But I want you to know tonight that the God of wonders is still in this place. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Your hands, everyone. Hallelujah. Listen. Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members, all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three. Shake it to those devils. I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. Shake it to the The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God. I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place For the power of God is everywhere There is no hiding place Not for witchcraft There is no hiding place I command judgment Let the angels Of the living God Move across this congregation And break chains Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break. Chains. Listen, some of you, these chains has lasted for years and decades 
I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family. You will know it when it happens. Because I hear sounds of chains at the count of three. Shout that name again with all your might. And I command that as they shout, may those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families, Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what says thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have I don't care what covenants you have in the name of Jesus therefore I speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return 
right now in the name of Jesus. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. Never to return. Out you go. By the ministry of the blood. By the ministry of the blood. I cost you. By the ministry of the blood, release the families, release their finances, release their destinies. Go now, go now. I compel you by the blood of Jesus. Of captivity, that blood opens that gate. Hallelujah! I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed, we open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely here. Stephanie. Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like is it four children? Or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours... If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let us know. If there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. That there is a call of God upon the family not just your mother but upon the family and it's a prophetic call it's a prophetic call right it's not only your mother I didn't I'm, I'm, I don't know you people but the hand of God is going to come upon you it's a mighty anointing of the spirit it will come upon you are you part of the family huh you are related. You are what? You are your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come. Come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> I don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? 
Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen, my dear. You don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, it will make it happen. My brother, this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does, what, what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now. Because they have been talking about this woman. She sees. And people have been saying she's fake. I'm saying if this woman is fake, she will not enter this place. I guarantee you. Except I'm not a man of God. Please, she's not fake. What she needs is, is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God. So that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened. She has a lot of prophetic insight. But the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken. Hold hands, both of you. I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jem Bramato Zatali Kaparando Skolabaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing. That is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing drink of that wine right now in the name of jesus christ don't be afraid to help her you won't be with her forever but the lord is going to lift you in due season and you will begin to see in a strange way may the lord bless you may he anoint you in the name of jesus christ i break the embargo of darkness over the family come you're a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies. In Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is, there is. Newi. I know it's an evil place, right? There is, there is, a, there is somebody. I, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. I don't know. You don't know. Yeah. You I love God. Sleep. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, dear. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not... Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Less than... Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. 
Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus? I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My Come on, give Jesus. Oh, Praise God. Break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch them. your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request, not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money, sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Yes, and I have since graduate. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? Let me talk. What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've the, left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cut the, of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the glory. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs in the name of Jesus. 
I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this room. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made. Let me yours. Please bring out. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you, it will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do, especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen. All of you standing. I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete.
complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly, you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request, ushers. Let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side, please. Help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online, it's time for them to connect now so that we can... Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of... No, no, I'm, I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am. I am yeah. Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Father, hear the prayers of your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let there be all kinds 
all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother. All kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs. Supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answered prayer will all flesh come. Is there anything Gathered, Lord, we ask you, blessed Lord, that every cry, every need, Lord, every pain, Lord, let things that look impossible by men, we pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs. Amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord, the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, we ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah Taya, he said is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God. And will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level. By the weapon of the prophetic. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command those limitations broken. Human limitations. 
demonic limitations I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah hallelujah I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration in the name of Jesus between now and the next miracle service step into those dimensions I prophesy to you step into those dimensions I prophesy to you step into those dimensions step into those dimensions hallelujah I pray for every student here listen this proverb will no longer be used in your life listen that proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics in the name that is above all names we send angels to every department of every campus represented here we send angels to every faculty may they tear down may they uproot every trace of wickedness may they tear down may they uproot in the name of Jesus let missing scripts be found let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus hallelujah for God has not given us the spirit of fear there are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down in the name of Jesus the Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage I cause fear from your life now I cause fear from your life now I cause fear I cause fear, I cause fear in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for you there are many who have been praying Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence there are people who have been crying I don't want to waste my time in destiny I pray for you that through a night vision mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you are you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ 
over your health. That spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions. The price has been paid. And therefore by the blood, I break you free from any covenant of infirmity. I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever. Hallelujah. I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families. There are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them. In the name of Jesus, we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service. Return with breakthrough testimonies. Return with breakthrough testimonies. You may not know how it will happen, but may my God go before you and shock you. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. There are many who are giving. You are tithing. You are faithful. But it just looks like when things are about to happen, there are limitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that beginning from next month, I invoke the mystery of divine supply. The same way, hear me. The same way a raven, the Bible does not tell us where it came from, but it brought bread for the prophet. I command mysteriously, may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles. I pray for everyone called dull in this place. You understand but something happens to your mind. That 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I sense an anointing. One more time I pray that prayer. Whatever stops you from understanding. The Bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. I pray for you. May understanding be granted unto you. Hallelujah. Favor. The one factor that separates men. That favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now. May favor mantle you from now. In the name of Jesus, financial favor, marital favor, academic favor, favor in your job, favor in ministry. Hallelujah. Everyone who is confused about life, any aspect of life, I bring that confusion to an end now. I pray for all those who came here specifically trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In fact, I pray for you. Listen, not just physical barrenness. Any area of your life, this is the year of the rain. And when rain falls, barrenness stops. Therefore, I command, be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Be fruitful. Multiply. Repent subdue and have dominion in the name of Jesus I command everything called dead in your life and your family I don't care for how long it has died your health, your business, your life in the name of the Lord Jesus I command resurrection right now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you. There are people who desire God. 
you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter i pray for you may the angel of the lord's presence visit you you may not understand what i'm saying may the angel of the lord's presence visit you in the name of jesus christ i pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are using that brings bread help her please i pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability i put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands i just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen I told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what I'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help her please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen I want to pray as I stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but i'm going is one of the major assignment god gave me tonight please believe it you will argue it at your own detriment there is a cheap route the help of god is here to lift you the help of god is here to take you lift your hands everybody father i pray that in the next two minutes let there be from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the 
The final prayer I want to pray for you is honor. Many of you don't know what honor is. Honor is not the same thing as blessings. You can be blessed but not honorable. It says, and Jabez was more honorable. Honor. That fragrance that compels loyalty. That fragrance. Zamatic alive. Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus i release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and i declare these hands that are lifted like Aaron like Joshua lifted up the hands of his servant Moses I command may those hands never go down may the Lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and I pray for marriages supernaturally may God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As it is happening to you, let it happen to every one of your family members, no matter where they are. I prophesy as it is happening to you, let it happen to every one of your family members. Hallelujah. Now very quickly, you are here. You've never given your heart to the Lord. Please hear me. Please keep standing, everybody. No moving around. Let's honor them. Just in one minute. You're here inside and outside. You have never made a decision for Jesus Christ. Or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus. But you found yourself dwindling. You have seen the hand of God. And Jesus is calling you back home. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let any man cajole you. Win the war in your heart today. For the sake of your destiny. Wherever you are. Please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here. I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you. Go ahead. Are there people like that? Go ahead. Don't look at any neighbor. Don't look at anyone. Wherever you are, inside or outside. Don't pretend it. Jesus is calling you very quickly. Very quickly. Where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus? Inside or outside? Make your way to the front. Don't be ashamed. Please appreciate them coin on you as they come. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. No matter how far, rush and make your way. Young and old. God bless you. Keep coming. It's time to make it right. Don't play games with destiny. Jesus is calling you. Come and surrender everything. Totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to jesus hallelujah i salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem i want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you I believe you died for me you rose again for me I surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.